Hallelujah. That's how Ian Paisley signed off his statement this morning, acknowledging he won't be facing the prospect of losing his seat in a by-election. The petition of recall failed to attract the required number of signatures, and despite behaviour which prompted a withering rebuke from the Commons authorities in July, Mr Paisley lives to fight another day. We'll discuss whether the son of the party's founder has been emboldened or humbled by the result in a moment after we hear from the man himself. We did ask Ian Paisley to join us in the studio tonight, an invitation he declined. But Gareth Gordon did catch up with him in Balamina earlier today to hear his reaction to what's happened. I actually think it was a miracle, to be perfectly blunt with you. Uh, I don't think anyone uh, believed that uh, achieving 7,543 uh, votes would have been a difficulty over six weeks and it proved to be impossible and I must say I, I'm stunned by the result, I'm overwhelmed by it, I'm greatly humbled by it that 90.6% um, of the people of my constituency, my constituents, Catholics and Protestants said we're not putting our name to that, we're keeping him as an MP, he put his hand up, he did something that he's apologised for and we're accepting your apology. But what about the theory that people knew if there was a by-election they thought you would win. Well, you can't have it both ways. I say pay people, you know, um, you, you just can't have it both ways. This was an opportunity. People were saying, we're going to oust Paisley. He's out in his ear. This was their big chance. And as it turned out, my constituents knew better than the propaganda that was being fed to them by uh, others. But you can't have it both ways either. You stood on your feet in the House of Commons in and July and you yeah. spoke of your deep personal embarrassment. None of that has changed. I've accepted the report, i put my hand up, I've apologised for it. Um, more than anyone else now, this has been put before um, 75, 76,000 people. And the people who put me in the House of Commons said, no, we're keeping you there, we've accepted that apology. And, uh, you know, I have to humbly accept that is their will. And uh, I, I think most people were expecting that there was going to be a by-election. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I think most people were expecting that there was going to be a by-election and they were going to give me a bloody nose. And the electorate actually decided something different. And whenever you analyse that vote, Gareth, Sinn Féin couldn't even muster 50% of their own supporters. But nonetheless, for, uh, that electorate will be without their MP inside Westminster at a very crucial period until probably around the 19th of November. So you are certainly not getting off scot-free. Well, well First of all, I have been punished. I've been punished with a 30-day suspension from my job. I've been docked my salary for that period as well, so I'm, I'm facing a, a very severe financial penalty. Um, I'm still doing my job as a Member of Parliament, and I'm still on call as a Member of Parliament. Um, but you uh, are right that I can't go into the Chamber and can't vote. But of course, votes in the Chamber on crucial matters are called by which party? They're called by the party of government. I believe Theresa May will sensibly make sure that any votes take place when she has her full cadre of supporters there to vote for the issues to do with Brexit. You have an image, rightly or wrongly, as a pretty cocky guy, pushes his luck a lot of time. Have you had a lot of time, to, you have had a lot of time to think about this? Is the MPs that we're going to see after this different than the MPs that before this? I, I can't win. Um, in terms of my personality um, because I think uh, some people will take the view that his confidence and his self-assurance that people want in their public representative is portrayed by others as arrogance. All I'd say is that the vast majority of people in this constituency who meet me, who know me, who support me have the opportunity to kick me out. 90.6% of them said, we're keeping you big fella, we like you. But you're in the news much too often for the wrong reasons and presumably you don't disagree with that. Is that going to change? The, the, look, I, I can't help the reasons why I, I get on the news. Well, I, you can. You I, could I, not I, accept well, well, trips to well, Sri Lanka I, 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 I could, and things like that. I could be a shrinking violet and not try to achieve things and not try to support things. Um, I am not prepared to do that. But are you prepared? Uh, to, of course. Will, of you, course. Be, will uh, you be operating differently? I, I think it's very clear that this has had an impact on me. Uh, you know that, you know me, Gareth, outside of this role. You know, it's had an impact on me. I am truly, and I've said so many, many times, six times publicly and privately, I'm truly sorry for how this happened, how it occurred. I made that apology. And I believe today, the chapter has changed. It's been turned. 
and people have said we've accepted that apology, move on. You are very, this is a good day for Let's you, keep walking. this is a good day for you, yeah. um, have there been bad days in the past two months? Uh, well I, I, I want to use an opportunity to say a huge thank you to my true friends, to my supporters, to my constituents and it's in adversity that you find friendship and uh, to all of those people who have been in contact with me, to my church group, to people who have supported me, but most of all to my family, who uh, I think had to go through um, uh, this with me, and they, 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 they don't sign up for any of this, you know? They, you placed uh, an emphasis there on true friends. Are the people who you thought were friends that you've discovered I, or I, not? I'm not making that inference. Um, uh, I believe that friendship should always be true. You're still a suspended member of the DUP, I mean, was that difficult for you? Uh, I've been a member of the Democratic Unionist Party for 36 years, boy and man. Uh, I've been in the DUP when it's extremely difficult to be in the DUP, and uh, when uh, and uh, you know so be it. Um, I I don't believe that. Um, you know I'm, I'm disappointed that I was suspended. I'm disappointed, obviously, for the reasons that, that caused the suspension. I have to say that. Are you surprised hands, you were suspended? My hands, hands up. It doesn't really matter. You know. The fact is, it's been suspended. The party officers have made that statement. It's up to them to um, change that, and I will await their their decision. Do you expect to be back? Um, well, I, I await their decision. I, I would be surprised if I wasn't. Put it like that. Ian Paisley speaking to Gareth Gordon in Ballymena, and of course, within an hour of that interview taking place, the DUP announced that Mr. Paisley had been readmitted to the party two days ago. With me now are the former editor of the Ballymena Guardian, Jim Flanagan, Sinn Féin's Philip McGuigan and Jim Wells from the DUP. You're all welcome to the programme. Philip McGuigan, first of all, do you accept Mr Paisley has apparently emerged virtually unscathed from this whole episode? Well, I think uh, today was a bad day for political accountability. I'm obviously disappointed that the threshold to force a by-election wasn't reached, but I certainly don't share uh, Ian's analysis that he was supported by 90.6% of the electorate of North Antrim. That's clearly absolute nonsense. Uh, people perhaps didn't sign the petition for a, a variety of reasons, but you know there'll be a lot of people who will have heard that interview included in that 90.6% uh, section of the constituency who will be 100% clear that they don't support Ian Paisley, nor his actions, nor this scandal uh, around Sri Lanka. Uh, we'll come back to some of those figures and toss them around in, in a moment or two. Um, Jim Wells, Ian Paisley says he's stunned and humbled by the outcome. Were you surprised by the result? I actually thought it would have been a lower number than that. I think the things that worked in Ian's favour was, first of all, the constituency work record of him and his father over this last 48 years has been legendary. And there's hardly a family in North Antrim hasn't been touched by the work. Uh, secondly, most people, I think, believe that if there was a by-election, it's going to be pointless because Ian Paisley was going to be re-elected anyhow. And I think, thirdly, there wasn't much stomach for a by-election in the streets of Lisnagunya or Buckna or Aknafatan, you know, in the middle of November. So I think those three factors together meant that the, the, the ducks were in a row, as it were, for, for Ian. And I, I think that's the reason why he pulled out of this great difficulty he was in. Do you accept, Philip McGuigan, that part of the problem for you was that people thought all along that Ian Paisley was more than likely to win any by-election if that was the result of the recall petition? So what was the point in turning up and signing the petition in the first place? I mean, I accept that the, there were a number of factors uh, that the threshold wasn't reached, and that was one of them. North Antrim is a unionist constituency. Uh, but, you know, there was a massive disgust and anger at Ian Paisley's action. I mean, I listened to him there talking to Gareth. He talked about a mistake. I mean, I don't think Ian Paisley made a mistake. And the MPs who uh, suspended him from uh, Westminster for 30 days didn't conclude that Ian Paisley made a mistake. No, they clearly concluded that Ian Paisley, Ian Paisley didn't uh, register the two Sri Lankan holidays in early 2013 because they knew that, that that would have caused and created embarrassment for him. And when you, you match that with uh, his letter to the then British Prime Minister uh, later in 2014 lobbying on behalf of Sri Lankan, uh, that Sri Lankan regime that paid for his holidays, uh, to stop a United Nations report into serious human breaches, sorry, serious human rights breaches and mass murder 
Uh, you know, and you connect those two things together, you know, it's quite clear that Ian Paisley didn't make a mistake. Ian pa Paisley was found guilty of very serious misconduct, and I would have liked the opportunity of the, the North Antrim electorate to question Ian Paisley, and one of the reasons why I'm disappointed there wasn't a by-election is because I know that the people would be putting questions to Ian Paisley that he cannot answer well, that's around that issue. a failure on the part of Sinn Féin and the other political parties who wanted to hold him to account. You <laughs> failed miserably to get enough people out. You had to get you know, just over 7,500 people. You failed by 444 votes well, to do that, and you've nobody to blame but yourself. That, I, don't think that's, I, I don't think that could be concluded as a miserable failure. I think, you know, the, the, the threshold was 10%, uh, and the actual uh, number of signatures was 9.4%. They're after... Re Ian Paisley there... says Sinn Féin couldn't even get half of its voters from the 2017 election out. What does that say about apathy in North Antrim? Well, I mean, I, I would conclude that the vast majority of the people who signed the petition were Sinn Féin voters, and, you know, I could, you know, without uh, admonishing other political parties, I mean, Sinn Féin were the only party in the game. You know, it's clear. Maybe that put it, unionist it's, off. Maybe the fact that you were so prominent in the constituency led some unionists to decide that uh, they weren't going to play your game. Well, I think that's a feeble argument. I mean, this issue wasn't an issue of orange and green, and I clearly stated that at the beginning. No, this was an issue of right and wrong, and I think it's weak leadership from unionism to use that as an argument. Unionism uh, should be concerned about integrity of their political representatives every bit as much as nationalists and republicans. So I think I'm, I'm very disappointed that unionism, okay. that the other parties weren't out fighting this very, very important issue, uh, side by side with Sinn Féin. J Jim Flanagan, did you know, let me just ask you first of all, um, did, did Ian Paisley know two days ago he'd been reinstated by the party? I think there's a very strong possibility that he did. And he that didn't answer the question no, straight whenever Gareth Gordon no, asked he didn't. him. There. He hedged his bets, didn't he? Well, I think you know the party may have had good reasons, I don't know, for, for not actually disclosing it ahead of the electoral chief electoral officer announcing the... Um, result. I mean, clearly today he's accentuating the positive, there's no doubt about it. And what politician will be a politician that doesn't actually uh, shout in the rooftops when a poll goes his way. But I mean, I think on reflection, um, he probably will um, possibly wish that he'd shown a little bit more restraint in terms of how he greeted uh, the, 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 the result. Uh, I mean, the fact that he has um, we will not be facing the electorate again. Uh, that in, in no way uh, uh, sort of absolves him from, from blame for, for what happened. Um, and it's a very serious matter being suspended by Parliament for a month. Uh, are you saying that when Ian Paisley watches back the interview that we've played in full there, he might be slightly embarrassed? There was a bit too much swagger and not enough humility. Well, I think that a lot of people um, who actually probably support him as well as uh, others will, will conclude that he could have been perhaps a bit more circumspect uh, given the fact that he is still suspended from Parliament. Um, he himself has uh, acknowledged that he's a long way to go to uh, regain uh, the trust that people put in him in the last general election. Um, he, he says that um, the fact that the recall petition didn't reach the required number of signatures is an endorsement of his position. He, he put on his Twitter profile today, 90.6% of the electorate supported him remaining as MP. I mean, that, that's a very interesting um, mathematical somersault to come up with that conclusion. Well, that I mean, 90.6% of the electorate didn't express any opinion, in fact. Absolutely, and I mean, I think everybody looking at that will see it as somewhat... But why has he put it on his profile? Well, why well, is he saying that? I mean, Ian Paisley, as we all know, is a combative politician, and he will have done that just simply, probably, to raise the heckles of his opponents, quite frankly. Um, you know, the, 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 the fact that he, he believes he has won um, the argument in relation to, it, to, to the matter, I mean, as I said to you, there is no getting away from the fact that um, Parliament's uh, punishment for what he did... Um, was quite quite severe, um, and you know he hasn't. By the way, it's important to remember that he hasn't actually apologised for um, any actions that he took in relation to Sri Lanka. He's only apologising for yeah, not declaring the holidays. Well, so. no, that's that's an interesting point, um, Jim. Let me come yeah. to the other Jim, Jim Wells. He was very clear in that interview with Gareth Gordon, recorded um, earlier today in Balamina, that you know he's sorry for not registering those holidays properly. He doesn't appear to be apologising for going on the holidays or for advocating on behalf of a foreign government. Yes, and I think many people were a bit concerned about his attitude after the result was announced. And are you? I am, because I think he should have be, ha, had a bit more humility. Um, he has, yet again, 
like Harry Houdini, he's got out of a very difficult situation. And, uh, but I still think he needs to address the underlying issues that he made a fundamental mistake here and he needs to show to the people that he's learned from that. And the great danger is that Ian would take this as an endorsement uh, and go back to his old ways. Well, Jim Allister has said he's concerned this might embolden Mr Paisley in future. Well, Do I, you I, share that I, concern? I, ho I hope not because Ian, despite all his hard work and his reputation, which is justified as being a champion of North Antrim, I think the next hurdle he falls at could be the final one. So I think he needs to sit down and secondly, he needs to go no further than Bush Mills for the next couple of years and do what he does best, which is representing the people of North Antrim. Well, we, and we would love an opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with him in this studio to discuss some of those issues. I just want to remind you, the Speaker, John Burko, um, described this whole situation as a regrettable state of affairs. The Common Standards Committee was very clear let me just quote, we conclude Mr Paisley has committed serious misconduct. We've concluded Mr Paisley's actions were of a nature to bring the House of Commons into disrepute. He got the biggest suspension okay. ever handed out since records began. You wouldn't yes. think that if you, if, if you were just yeah. listening to what no, Ian Paisley no, said no, earlier it's, today. It's worth saying, Mark, that obviously the people of North Antrim have had this constantly for the last sort of three months. And the fact is not even a majority of nationalists in North Antrim, not even a majority of Sinn Féin voters, felt it worthwhile to come out and sign the petition against him. So therefore... Uh, yeah, the but you said part of the reason might be because they thought, what's yes, the point, but, he's going to win the clearly, seat anyway. Clearly, what has kept him in good state is his, his incredible constituency. Yeah, but, but, look, that, but what I'm interested in hearing from you is, what precisely has he apologised for? He said he expressed his profound yes. regret and embarrassment in the House of Commons. For what exactly? For not registering it. For not, for reg not registering mm -hmm. the... Ho that's it? I think it's clear that he... Is yeah. that it? Hang on. I is think, that it, Jim? And I think he needs to go further. So he needs to go further. He yeah. needs to address the issues that and I've just mentioned there from the Standards I apologise for going on the holiday in the first place as well as not registering it. But I think the people of North Antrim have passed their verdict and the verdict is that he continues on. OK, but if he doesn't acknowledge that, as Jim Wells, who's a fellow party member, says he should, then that's the end of the matter really, isn't it? You're not going to make him apologise. Well, I mean, I, th I think uh, Ian Paisley uh, is quite clearly sorry he was caught and that's the only thing that he's sorry for. I mean, the, the, the arrogance... Uh, has returned today and Ian Paisley, the sense of entitlement that he thinks he can carry on with this type of action uh, will continue. I mean, the, the words scandal and Ian Paisley go together. Uh, I mean, we have to remember that, for example... That, well, he would, he, would, well, he would refute that, wouldn't well, he? Well, the Electoral Commission are currently investigating Ian Paisley for, uh, you know, two dinners here in Ballymena. Uh, you know, so, so that's a live investigation. It's a, it's a, a, it's a live yet. investigation. So, so, so you can't draw a conclusion where well, there isn't one. No, but one conclusion I can, can can draw is that you know Ian Paisley and scandal will continue to be two words that will come together, just given his attitude and his sense of entitlement. Well, he he, he may disagree with that, although he didn't interestingly uh, disagree with uh, Gareth Gordon when he said, "Look, he sailed a bit mm. close to the wind in the past," but he said he's not a shrinking violet. Mm. He he wants to get things done. Sometimes he sailed sailed a bit close to the wind. And where he believes he was wrong this time round, he's apologised, and that's an end to the matter. And the electorate had an opportunity to unseat him and didn't take well, it. Well, I mean, I think, I think, I mean, I said earlier there were a number of reasons why the threshold wasn't reached. One of them clearly uh, was the process itself and the handling of the process by the electoral office. I mean, we made very, uh, we had raised very serious concerns uh, prior to the electoral office making the decision about how this process would be run. Uh, this isn't me uh, being a sore loser, being wise. Well, some people wise, think it is well, you being well, a sore loser. I mean, I mean, we've had anecdotal evidence from people who said it was it was hard to find your yeah. way through the various uh, places where you could sign the yeah. petition. But at the same time, the chief electoral officer, Virginia McVeigh, says her operation was unprecedented. Yeah. It lasted for six weeks. Postal votes on request, mm. two evenings. If you wanted to sign your name to that petition in North Antrim, you had ample opportunity well, to do so. That's the fact. Well, the, f the fact is that the chief electoral officer had the opportunity to uh, have 10 centres and given the large geographical nature and the political makeup of North Antrim I would have thought the fact that you were allowed to use 10 I can't see of any other constituency across the north there, you, you would, really would matter use at 10. this point if you really yeah. wanted to sign you had an opportunity right. to do so you didn't have to go to one of those centres well, you could have asked for a postal vote you didn't have to give a reason okay. you could have done it from the comfort of your own home 
Well, I mean, I don't know any pe anybody who's a postbox in their own home, Mark, with all due respect. You could have filled the form out yeah. in the comfort of your own home yeah. and posted it. Uh, yes, and a third of the yeah, people did. I mean, as I say, you know, you don't have a postbox in your own home. But the bottom but line... You probably have one at the end of your well, road. Well, the bottom line on this is that the process itself didn't allow itself right. for people to do it in the way they should. I mean, there's a, there's a simple reason why... Okay. Well, not everybody agrees well, with There's you a simple reason why elections are run from 7 in the morning to 10 at night. Because people, the normal work on day is 9 to 5, yeah. 7 a.m. to 10 at I night allows people that. There before were six work weeks and after. And two well, late but, evenings no, and postal Well, votes. Mark, it's important to point out that there were six weeks of 9 to 5 yeah. and there were two, and late, two late evenings. And two late evenings yes. that weren't identified. And, and postal then, votes there were two late for anybody evenings, who wanted them. There were two yeah. late, late evenings that weren't notified right. in the initial well, Jim, letter that the electoral office sent Jim Flanagan, I want, to, I want to just broaden this out uh, a little bit. Sorry for, Philip, for, for, for cutting across you, but I want to bring Jim in here. What are the implications potentially of this in North Antrim for the DUP? You know the constituency very well. You know Ian Paisley very well. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it will be, frankly, from his point of view, business as usual. It's quite clear now, we know today, that in fact he was going to be the official UP candidate had that threshold been met because the suspension was lifted before the result was known. So there's no doubt that he would have been the standard bearer for, for that. And, it, you know, quite frankly, the party knew um, from meetings that were held in the constituency that his local association was sticking by him through thick and thin, uh, notwithstanding you know, the issues that have arisen, the, per the, 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 you know, the, the personal embarrassments that it caused him. So, so he is virtually unscathed? I wouldn't say he's unscathed, no, I think that is not true. Virtually unscathed? Virtually unscathed in the sense, electorally, he's virtually unscathed and um, you know, he may suffer. I mean, he, he won in a landslide uh, last year. Uh, to over a 20,000 majority. That, you, can, that, you can afford to lose a few thousand votes next time round and still be very comfortable, can't I you? absolutely can. And I mean, it's quite clear to me that when you look at that result, um, very, very few, a uh, limited number of unionists okay. actually signed the petition. OK, Jim, uh, two sentences. What are the potential implications for your party, if you think there are any at all? Uh, I, for Ian, personally, no, because Ian's got a huge majority. Ian will be the MP for North Antrim for many years to come. Secondly, we now go back to having 10 MPs at Westminster to see through the will of the people through Brexit. Uh, I think the way it's going to work out, there'll be no crucial votes during the, uh, the three-month suspension, which is good news. And I think if Ian gets down and works hard, as he always has, and doesn't get involved in any further activities like this, I think he's a, a fairly clear future. But does the DUP still need to learn a lesson about humility? I think they do. I think not so much the DUP, but Ian does. I mean, Ian's a lovable rogue. There's parts of Ian's personality which everybody likes, and there's other aspects that I think he needs to deal with. OK, gentlemen, we will leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed for uh, joining us.